Mr. McCoy back with part seven of the Dollhouse Murders. As you recall, Mrs. Trelore said that Mrs. Peck thinks the girls should learn how to take the bus by themselves. But they can't, Amy exclaimed. They'll get lost, Mom. Will not, Luann thrust the puppet into Amy's face. Will not, she roared. I can do it. Calm down, Mrs. Trelore ordered. We'll talk to your father about it tonight. Mrs. Peck has Marissa doing a lot of things Luann doesn't do. She goes to the grocery store all by herself, and she has a little garden, and Marissa is older, Amy said. She pushed away the sock puppet impatiently. Marissa is, she was going to say smarter, but the look on Luann's face stopped her in time. Besides, she didn't really know Marissa, except for a glimpse or two when the girls got off their school bus. Uh, Marissa is different she finished lamely. Not, Luann shrieked. We're just the same. Amy shrugged. She couldn't figure out why the thought of Mrs. Peck teaching Luann to do things was so irritating. But it was. Clearly, Mrs. Trelore wasn't especially pleased either. Luann is ours, Amy thought. That's it. We know what she can do and what she can't do. We don't need any Mrs. Peck trying to change things. That was a silly way to feel. They did need Mrs. Peck, <laughs> at least Amy did, if she was going to enjoy the visit with Aunt Claire. Well, it's up to you and Dad, I guess, Amy told her mother in a low voice while Luann sniffed and rubbed her eyes. I'd better go. I told Aunt Claire I'd be back early because we have some stuff to do tonight to get ready for the party. Darn. The word had slipped out before she could stop it. Amy almost groaned out loud. This was certainly her day for saying the wrong thing. Party? The puppet dangled forgotten from Luann's hand. What party? I want to go too, Mom. Have you ever had days like Amy has had where you say the wrong thing at the wrong time? Share your experiences with your fellow listener. Mrs. Trelore shook her head. Amy's having a few friends over at Aunt Claire's tomorrow night. Nothing special. We'll have her real birthday party right here when she comes home again. We'll have a cake and we'll play games and you can invite Marissa. Luann was not to be sidetracked. I want to go to the party at Aunt Claire's house, she cried. I want to go to that party. Well, you can't. The words were sharper than Amy had intended. She was disgusted with herself and she was angry at her mother too. Why does she always make me feel like a selfish monster? Why can't she just once say, this is Amy's birthday party and she and her friends have a right to be alone? That would never happen. With a despairing look at Luann's tear-streaked face, Amy ran upstairs to her bedroom. Her shopping bag lay at the foot of the bed. She grabbed it and raced back downstairs. I have to go, she said. She felt strange and stiff as if she were talking to strangers instead of to her own family. Say hi to Dad for me. Her mother followed her to the front door, edging around Luann. I'll have your birthday cake ready tomorrow afternoon, she said coolly. Your father can drop it off on his way to Madison. He has a weekend seminar and he wants to be there tomorrow night. The meetings begin early Saturday morning. Thanks, Mom. Amy didn't meet her mother's eyes. I'm sorry. They both looked at Luann, who had turned her back to them and was leaning against the wall. I suppose you are, Mrs. Trelore said with a sigh. It seems like such a little thing, including your sister and your birthday party. But it's up to you. I guess I can take her out for a hamburger or something when I get home from work. Amy fled to her bike. She fairly flew down the driveway, steadying the shopping bag that was crammed into the bike basket and swung out onto the street. Houses streaked by, blurred by her tears. Right now, she had Aunt Claire to go to, but Aunt Claire didn't want to stay in Claiborne. She could hardly wait to get back to Chicago. What'll I do then, Amy wondered, when she leaves? Where will I run? If you were there to answer Amy's question, what would you tell her? Share with your fellow listener. The smell of hot caramel met Amy when she opened the back door. Aunt Claire was at the kitchen table, gently stirring a huge batch of popcorn to coat it with syrup. 
Soup and salad for supper tonight, she announced when she saw Amy. Uh, we have more important things to do than cook dinner. Amy helped herself to a handful of caramel corn. It was good to see a smile after the painful scene at home. This tastes marvelous. Ellen will go crazy. Caramel corn is her favorite thing in the whole world. What else are we going to have? Fudge, Aunt Claire said. Tons of fudge. That's my favorite. Not that I'm going to hang around the party and make a pest of myself. I do remember what it's like to have adults watching every move you make. But we'll cook a double batch, and then tomorrow night I'll go off to my room after you've eaten, and I'll take along a whole plateful just for me. And how about egg rolls? I have the most marvelous recipe for egg rolls. <laughs> With pizza? Amy giggled. Her aunt's enthusiasm was irresistible. You're right, terrible idea, but I bought a huge bag of potato chips on the way home and the makings for a very special dip. How does that sound? Terrific. Amy was feeling better by the minute. I'll run upstairs with the stuff I brought from home. Oh, my mom said Dad will drop off the cake tomorrow afternoon. He's going out of town and he'll bring it on the way. Uh, that'll be fine. Aunt Claire covered the bowl of popcorn with foil and set it at the end of the table. How did it go at home, she asked. Everything back to normal? Amy didn't want to talk about home. It was okay, she said. I wasn't there very long. How's Luann getting along with the sitter? All right, I guess. They make things, Amy changed the subject. Shall I get out the sugar and butter for the fudge? Aunt Claire nodded. It's perfectly obvious Luann needs other people in our life. It isn't fair to expect her family to carry the whole burden. I know I've offended your mother by saying that, but I couldn't help speaking up the first night I had dinner at your house. So that was it. That was why Amy's mother turned cool and quiet every time Aunt Claire was mentioned. Anyway, Aunt Claire continued, we have work to do at the moment, right? We, do we have enough chocolate for a double batch of fudge? Let me check. And you can open a can of soup, whatever you like. By the time they had eaten, set the fudge to cool and mixed up the dip, which turned out to have 14 ingredients, it was after nine. There's one more thing we ought to do this evening, Aunt Claire said. You mentioned you'd like Ellen to stay overnight, didn't you? Amy nodded. Then. We must get an extra blanket and air it. There's a chest in the attic packed full of blankets and comforters. They're in pretty good shape, even after all this time, but definitely musty. You run up and pick out one for Ellen. I'll hang it out on the clothesline to air tomorrow before I start cleaning. Amy's stomach did a sharp flip-flop. She wasn't ready to go up to the attic. Not for a while. The nights aren't very cool now, she protested. Ellen might not even want a blanket. Of course she'll want one, Aunt Claire said. At least there should be one in her room if she needs it. But I I'm not sure I can find the chest. It's just at the top of the stairs on the left. A big metal box, you can't miss it. Aunt Claire gave Amy a look and Amy knew she was sending a message. She wants me to know she trusts me to go up there without moving the dolls. There was no way out. She'd have to get the blanket. Amy left the kitchen and went down the dimly lit hall to the stairs. I won't even look at the dollhouse corner, she promised herself. I'll grab the top blanket and run. At the attic door, she hesitated. Maybe she could give Ellen her own blanket instead of getting another one. No, Aunt Claire would surely ask questions Amy, was Aunt Claire calling from the kitchen. I forgot to tell you, I think the light is burned out in the attic. Take the big flashlight that's on the table next to my bed. Oh, great, Amy's heart thudded as she switched on a lamp in Aunt Claire's room and searched for the flashlight. She was halfway up the stairs, the flashlight beam bobbing on the steps in front of her when she heard a small sound. Mice, please let it be mice funny thing to wish considering how much she hated mice. She stood still. The sound stopped too for just a moment, then began again. Something was moving around in the darkness above her. 
the trunk on the left at the top of the stairs. Amy said the words to herself, trying to close out every other thought. When she reached the top step, she saw the big metal chest right where Aunt Claire said it would be. She leaned over to loosen the fastenings with trembling fingers. The top blanket, she told herself, quick. The rustling, scraping sound grew louder. It was coming from the dollhouse corner. Without really meaning to, Amy swung the flashlight beam across the attic. The sheet that had covered the house was on the floor in a white heap. The house gaped open. So what do you think is going to happen now? Share with your fellow listener. Amy's knees turned to jelly. The flashlight slipped from her fingers. When she tried to bend down and pick it up, she couldn't move. All she could do was stare at the house and at the eerie glow that it was beginning to fill the dollhouse parlor. A light in the dollhouse. Amy squeaked in terror and dropped to a crouch. Her fingers closed on the flashlight and she clattered down the steps, stumbling on the last one and hurtling into the hall. With a sob, she slammed the door behind her and leaned against the wall. Amy, what on earth are you doing up there? It was Aunt Claire again. Did you find a blanket? Every, everything's okay, Amy quavered. Her voice sounded as if it belonged to someone else. I, I dropped the flashlight, but it didn't break. She paused, willing her aunt to stay downstairs. I guess I'll do my homework now and go to bed. I'm sort of tired. That's fine. Pleasant dreams. <laughs> what a joke that was. As Amy pulled off her clothes and fumbled with the buttons on her shorty pajamas, she was more wide awake and more frightened than she'd been in her life. After a moment's thought, she pushed the rocking chair across the room and hooked its back under the door so that no one and nothing could open it without her knowing. Then she climbed into bed and pulled the sheet over her head. I saw a light in the dollhouse. The words rattled around in her brain and she'd seen even worse. In the second before she ran down the stairs, something had moved in the dollhouse parlor. Something small and standing on two feet. Not a mouse, Amy whimpered under the sheet. Oh, I wish it had been a mouse. Happy birthday, dear Amy, Aunt Claire started to sing as Amy came into the kitchen, then stopped short. You look terrible. Don't tell me you're coming down with something. Not the day of your party. I'm fine. Amy tried to sound as if she didn't have a thing on her mind except being a year older. I just didn't sleep well. <laughs> I should think not. Aunt Claire put a hand on Amy's forehead. You're not feverish, but what circles under those eyes? Why couldn't you sleep, for heaven's sakes? Amy sat down and busied herself with cereal, sliced bananas and milk. I guess I'm just excited about the party, she lied. It's really nice of you to do all this for Ellen and me, Aunt Claire. You know I love it, Aunt Claire said. It's great to have a daughter, even if it's just for a short time. And it'll be nice having Ellen stay overnight, too. Did you find a blanket for her? Amy gulped. I'll get it as soon as I'm through uh, eating, she promised. It was so, so dark up there last night, I decided to wait until morning to get one. Well, never mind, I'll do it. Aunt Claire poured coffee into a big old-fashioned mug and lifted it to her lips. I was just feeling lazy by the time we finished making the fudge last night. Today, I'm bursting with energy. Amy shook her head quickly. Uh, no, I'll do it, I want to. Aunt Claire mustn't go upstairs. She'd find the house uncovered and open and be certain Amy had done it. So what do you think Amy's going to do right now Share with your fellow listener. And now, moments more of The Dollhouse Murders. I should have called her to the attic to see what I saw last night, Amy thought for the hundredth time, but she had been too frightened then to think clearly. All she'd wanted to do was get out of the attic as fast as possible. As soon as breakfast was over, Amy went upstairs and collected her school books from her room. She laid the books in her notebook in a neat pile at the top of the stairs, and then, taking a deep breath, she marched to the attic door and opened it. We'll find out what happens to Amy and so much more as The Dollhouse Murders continues.